Well, uh, so yeah, just kind of tell you a little bit about myself. I, I am a pharmacist. Uh, I own a, uh, a small community pharmacy in Rock Island. Um, why is that any significance? Well, if you know anything about what's happening in the pharmacy world today, um, there, there's no community pharmacies left. You know, and, uh, and certainly what we do is uh, we make medications. We make medications from scratch. And even of that, there's even less of us who specialize in that. So if you came over to me to fill a, a high blood pressure medication, we're going to send you down the road, but we will certainly uh, uh, make a compound for you. Compounding is essentially, you know, of what pharmacy used to do years ago. It's the art and science of, of making a prescription uh, according to a doctor's prescription. And, and why would you come to see me? Um, well, there's lots of reasons maybe why. Perhaps a, a something you've been taking is, is off the market. Perhaps you are allergic to something that is in there. Um, do we have anybody who's gluten intolerance? Corn intolerance, or corn, lactose intolerance. If you're a vegan, you know there might be some issues there. So there are reasons to come to see me for those types of things. And then we kind of do some things that are kind of outside the box. Uh, if a medication can be taken orally but it upsets your stomach, we can actually make it transdermal. And sometimes go through the skin that way. Uh, we do a lot of times uh, 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 in between strengths. We have many clients who are very sensitive to, to uh, the regular strength that need to be cut down to a smaller strength and swallow. So every field of medicine that's out there, we are working with, whether it is a veterinarian to uh, in hospice work, uh, uh, to pediatrics, to, you know, uh, we work a lot of integrative medicine. That's something that probably a lot of you may have worked with somebody, you know, in our community who kind of thinks a little bit, get outside the box that they may somebody like me and so uh, uh, we are uh, 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 one of the few pharmacies also in the country that are actually credited for doing what I do that sounds kind of odd because you go to a hospital you just kind of assume that a hospital is accredited and you, know, you can certainly check to see if you know if they're joint commission accredited um, that's that's almost a, that's a given well pharmacies are not all accredited and certainly and compounding they are not accredited. Um, most of them don't want to be because if they have to do the accreditation process, that means they're going to have to uh, invest in specialized rooms, specialized hoods, specialized equipment, um, and put themselves through all kinds of things like uh, are you testing properly? Are you making sure that your employees are making the, the right ways of uh, the medications? We test for potency. Test for sterility. You know, we're one of the few pharmacies that actually still do sterile, sterile work. And that's important because if they're not accredited, there's a pharmacy about five years ago that wound up killing seven people. They called themselves a compounder. They were not. They were they were you know, kind of disguised themselves as a manufacturer and so sending things out all over the country and they did not test and then they wound up, you know, hurting hurting uh, several hundred people and killing seven people. So you now our my industry is really under a lot of scrutiny because of that, and rightly so. But certainly it is something that you want to make sure why are you, why and who are you going to. And there are many compounders throughout the country. And so um, I always ask people, did you talk to them? Do you see them face to face? So it's important to ask questions that way. Um, uh, so any question about what compounding is? So if you come down to our store, you will see mortars and pestles uh, in the lab, but you also will see all kinds of uh, um, up-to-date equipment, uh, specialized mixers, specialized analytical scales to, to specialized powder containment hoods. We don't want you walking into our facility and breathing in chemicals that you shouldn't be breathing in. And we also want to protect our employees. If you like our employees, we want to make sure they're safe and everything. So that's, that's you know, I have fun every day. I talk to physicians every day um, that ask me a question that is outside the box. You know, I have this patient, um, I have this, this, uh, and we don't know what to do. You know, what can you know? Do you have any ideas? So that's that's the that's the fun part, and, and certainly you know, um, uh, I I think I, I'm the luckiest guy in the world because I get to do what I do and help people uh, that way. Um, 
I was just going to kind of talk a little bit about vitamin D. Have uh, you seen my lecture before on vitamin D? No. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, we'll kind of highlight some things. You know, and, and people ask me when they come in, you know, Jim, what do you recommend as supplements? You know, and, and vitamin D is going to be up on the list. I think everyone needs to be on vitamin D. Uh, and vitamin D is actually not a vitamin. It actually is a hormone. Did everybody know that vitamin D is really a hormone? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so it, it is a it is a much required uh, vitamin that we, that we need. And when I was in school, at least, uh, I was told that you could overdo it. And you could get way too much mm -hmm. fat-cycle vitamin. And we got to be very, very careful. And so that was always kind of my, in the back of my head. Vitamin D is very dangerous, but actually it's not. Vitamin D is very, uh, very, very safe. Um, but kind of going back a little bit, what do I recommend for people? You know, I mean, everybody, they always say, you know, is there something I should take? And I would say for everybody, what we should do, and obviously I think you've seen Dr. Ansu speak, probably Dr. Uh, Shaw speak, mm -hmm. Dr. Golden, and certain practitioners. Um, you know, I think everybody should be on a good multivitamin. I think can take a couple times throughout the day. Uh, so, we're, so we're utilizing that nutrition. I think people need to be on a good probiotic. You need a good, a good gut for our immune system. So we are we are uh, being exposed to a lot of toxins, a lot of a lot of uh, antibiotics in food and water and pesticides. So we need to make sure our guts in play. Certainly, you've seen Dr. Shaw talk about the gut brain connection there. Um, I think everybody should be on uh, a good fish oil. To talk about you know dosages of these things, and then finally the vitamin D. You know, so those, if you just take some of those points home, and we'll you know why you need vitamin D. Well, certainly uh, vitamin D is is what I kind of call it's the sunshine vitamin. Today, if you if we stepped outside, you know we had shorts on, stuff, we could be able to get vitamin D into our skin. That's how we absorb it. We don't make it ourselves. Um, we have to we have to absorb it or ingest it. Um, a lot of people come to me and say, well, I get plenty of vitamin D because I drink milk. No, there's not much vitamin D in milk. There's very little. It's fortified, so we're adding some vitamin D to milk. The um, best way to get vitamin D is to go outside and, and get exposed for about 15 minutes in the sun, your legs, your face, before you put on sunscreen. Once you put on sunscreen, you are washing away 99% of all the vitamin D absorption we have. We have an epidemic states that we are, we, we are all low in vitamin D. Has anyone ever had the vitamin D uh, a little tested? Do you know where you're at? I was on at 17. Okay. 9 to 66. Okay, good. So 17 is very low. Uh, normal normal is, the, uh, is 30 to 100 nanograms of, uh, of uh, the 25 hydroxy vitamin D. And physicians are really, really happy for close to 30. And really, what we need to know is that in order to really get the immune system working, we need to be somewhere between 60 and 80. So you're there, you know, with that. You need probably go a little bit higher, but we're, we're at least two. So your goal is 60 to 80. They'll be very, very happy if you're at 30. Why is it important to have it at between 60 and 80? Well, it's going to protect you against a lot of the autoimmune issues, but especially going to protect you against breast cancer, prostate cancer colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, and then you start naming off all the all the, uh, the, uh, the the different type of uh, autoimmune issues, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, to type 2 diabetes, uh, fibromyalgia, uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, you know, um, so all, everything that's, that's associated with uh, low vitamin D can be associated with the, with the improper immune system. Want to make sure your immune system is working properly. Um, RDA. Now you go to you get a multivitamin or you pick something up and it says recommend daily allowance. And you know the recommend daily allowance for everybody in this room is 800 units of vitamin D a day. Somewhere between 4 and 800. Okay. Um, that's just there to help prevent rickets. All right. And I usually show a picture of rickets. I'm not going to get on my computer and show you. I usually have this long talk with everything. 
But, you know, we don't see rickets too much. We can't. I've had actually a couple of patients, you know, in my practice that had rickets. But, uh, um, can I no, see what see. it looks like? Essential yeah. care. Yeah. What does rickets look like? Uh, the malformed bones, uh, and they're almost like bull naked. Um, I'll see if I can bring up a picture here. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm curious. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Aren't you? <laughs> no, I was going to ask the same thing you're talking about. <laughs> Like the visual, but I know I can throw. I'm up here as, as we're talking here, but uh, so we're only trying to help prevent disease. But when we are talking about actually doing helping the body actually um, uh, the immune system working, we've got to get that a little higher again, somewhere between 60 and 80. With that. Now, to get to somewhere between 60 and 80, you're going to need to do somewhere between 5,000 and 10,000 units of vitamin D a day. That's huge. That's huge in, in comparison to what you're hearing. Um, 15 years ago, I remember recommending 2,000 units a day. I got a call from an internist and said, um, Are you Mr. Perry? Oh, yes, I am. But, you know, what are you doing recommending that much vitamin D to? to uh, Patients, you know, you're, that's toxic. You're going to put them a toxic level, and I would say, doctor, have you been reading the other reports? Uh, you know that this is a very safe vitamin. But bare minimum is 2,000, 2,000 a day. So you know all the things you can want to do, they're going to feel better. Well, I don't want anybody going over 800. You know, and, and so you know we wind up having those these these these, these old um, ways about this, and we think about vitamin D as being toxic. There is a there's actually a prescription vitamin D. And it's called vitamin D2, and it's called uh, ergocalciferol is the is the chemical name. And I apologize, I'm going to keep on looking as I'm talking here. So ergocalciferol is a vitamin, is a vitamin D, and you know where they get that from is actually from mushrooms, and they and they wind up a certain type of mushroom. I couldn't tell you what it is, um, but uh, um, uh, that's what we give patients. Uh, uh, as a prescription. We always think, well, the prescription is much better than the stuff that's over the counter. And actually, Creighton University, where I went to school at, did a little research on that and found out that that's not necessarily true. In fact, 50,000 units of vitamin D2 was only equivalent to around 3,000 units of vitamin D3. Yeah. D3 is your natural vitamin D. Okay. Can you take it all at once, or should you spread it out? You can take 5,000 all at once or something, yeah. Um, uh, I'll skip ahead a little bit what I recommend right now when I'm telling you. I, I have a hard time taking vitamins. I have a hard time remembering. And I don't necessarily like taking everything at once. So um, I actually, what I'm doing is, is taking 50,000 units once a week. If I divide that out, that's going to be around 7,000 units daily. All right. Um, and all I have to do is remember, hey, Jim, it's Sunday. It's time to take your vitamin D. Yes. And, uh, do you do a prescription then? No, it's right over the counter. Yeah, it's over the counter. We get we have a bottle of uh, 15, 15 capsules, like nineteen dollars, and it is uh, so fifteen weeks worth for nineteen dollars. Um, and it's very good. Fifteen thousand for one pill. What brand would that be? It's from a company called Ortho Molecular. Oh, I've heard of them. Yeah. We only carry certain brands down at the, the, the where I'm at, just because I want to ensure that I know how they're being made. And as a pharmacist, I mean, I'm a pharmacist. I'm kind of the anti-pharmacy pharmacist, but I have learned that you know how how's, how are drugs being developed? How are things? What's the research behind it? What you know? How are they going about it? So I'm looking for companies that that are looking for for that. Yeah. Um. With that much going through your system, wouldn't your system flush it out? No, it's a fat-soluble vitamin, cool. so it's it's absorbing it. Well, I, I, okay, I just remembered it's. Do you eat fat with it? No, you just take it just without it. Your body will take it up. Your body will take everything it possibly can uh, of your vitamin D. Hmm. You start you use everything up until you get around a level of forty, and then after forty, you start storing it. So now you're storing it, okay? So that's important. You know, right now in the summertime, you know, you're you're getting some, and our levels are highest during the summer. Obviously, we live in you know a climate that we are exposed to very little sunlight, um, 
and, and then we wind up not having very much of it, and it's very low in the winter. And then we get little winter blues, right? So that's, that's normal. Um, you get some vitamin D in you, you do feel better. It is a feel-good hormone. It definitely will help with depression and anxiety with that. So I can walk into your pharmacy. I, I don't know why, but I thought you, I had to have, um, you know, some a, a prescription from a doctor to walk, pretty much to walk into your pharmacy. There's, we do have over-the-counter um, items um, that we have. But for me to, pres to do a mm -hmm. prescription. Oh, yeah, yes, I know yes. that. But, I mean, I didn't realize you sold over Here is a child, and it's hard to see, but if you want to... <laughs> oh my goodness. Malformation of legs. Wow. So that would be rickets. And that's just a vitamin D. That's a vitamin D for deficiency. Okay. Wow. Lisa, can you can turn the computer so I can get a good shot of that? Okay. Did you ever you end the cover? <laughs> no, you just kinda of, I mean it's this 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 child will be deformed the rest of us in spite of the mom was the vitamin D deficient too. We just don't see it very often. I mean, because I mean, again, we are fortifying food. All right. So people think of all right. So how much? What's in? Very little of it. Maybe about uh, 50 to 100 units is in a glass of milk. All right. So not, not a lot. And I wouldn't drink milk. I mean, I love the taste of milk. But milk's terrible for it. Yeah. Um, um, you know, uh, fresh fish like tuna. Salmon will have a little, have a little bit more around again around 50 to 100. Um, you have some other vegetables and things that will have some vitamin D in there, but not much. You know they might they fortify vitamin D with uh, in your orange juice to a lot of different things that they're in there. Um, it's not much. It's probably not the best vitamin. They're fortifying it. So. No. Yeah. Um, you know. Going back to the you know, cancer research, um, you know, we, we see a high rate of uh, breast cancer in the northern hemisphere. We, and, and so that's why they wound up you know, recommending it around 1,200 to 2,000 units a day to help prevent breast cancer. And they, they found a, uh, I believe it was like an 80% reduction in overall cancer risk for women with vitamin D you know, at that level. Um, and that's what brought the research up there. Well, it was kind of, um, so this became a very in vogue thing to start testing on the last 10 years, your vitamin D levels. The physicians got very frustrated because they gave you this 50,000 unit dose of vitamin D2. They saw it go up initially, and they saw it drop. And, they, and then that's when they started looking at the research saying, what's going on? And they, they can see that the vitamin D2 doesn't, doesn't do very well accumulating. Toxic on the kidneys, but, they, but we want the D3 to really start burning those up. So we recommend again the D3. Is D3 hard on the kidneys? No, um, they will tell people that you know they say um, you get too much D. There's a possibility oh. of, of having kidney stones. Um, I'll tell you that I've had kidney stones. I had a low vitamin D level, so that's you know far as I've taken them. Um, so there's there's there is, can be a increase of uh, serum calcium, excuse me, uh, uh, urine calcium level. So that's something you want to watch, but you have to be really taking a lot. So if I, I just had the test done and I had a spillage in my protein in my urine. Protein's not, yeah, you know, that's not, protein. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, then, then creatinine is, is part of the protein, part of that. Um, so, uh, one of the great things of uh, taking the 50,000 units, you know, um, you we know, all we'll get those colds and those viruses and feel run down, the flu and everything. One thing you can do with the vitamin D is take 100,000 units for three to five days when you are feeling that way. You've got a cold coming on or you have your flu coming on to really boost that immune system. 100,000 units for three to five days. That will knock it out. That's better than any antibody you can take for, you know, running to the physician, and that will do, do you want to, so that's why I like the, the little boxes, you can just wind up taking two, and you might go through it a little quicker, but it's a very good way of, of boosting your immune system that way. So uh, if someone was really low, like extremely low, 
know, like I was in the beginning when you recommended something like that, can those start immediately back up? Not really. I mean, they do do some shots that way. There, there, they have been um, physicians out there ask for vitamin D three shots, and they'll do uh, six hundred thousand units for for a month supply. They'll do it in the butt ox, they'll do about three hundred thousand each side, and there's not a whole lot of people who do that. I don't make them. Um, there's some reasons why I don't make them, but uh, uh, but it is a way of building that up. But I, I would wind up just taking the fifty thousand months a week or a hundred thousand months a week. You would have to take 100,000 units every day for the next probably 90 to 100 days to really get toxic. Okay, so we're not we're not uh, we're not we're not going to do that with these typical dosages. So you can be uh, vitamin D deficient if you know again where we live at. We're going to be vitamin D deficient because uh, where we live at. Uh, low fat diets, you know, um, these only fat diets. Those aren't very safe for us ultimately. Um, can lead to it. Uh, you can have Crohn's disease that can lead to it, pancreatic enzyme deficiencies. Um, and if you eat uh, too much animal protein, that can lead to some uh, uh, vitamin D insufficiencies. Uh, I have a little note here, I was kind of reading this. You know, there has been no reports of toxicity of people who have a serum level over 200, so anything below 200. So I told you 30 to 100 is normal. It's really, it took you a long time to get to 60. You know, um, you're not, you know, anything below 200 would be, would be non-toxic. Um, I had a physician here locally, she's not here any longer, doesn't practice, but she would see a lot of multiple sclerosis patients. And her goal for them was actually, she got their level up to about 120. So she got way above it, and she saw a great um, um, effect when treating some of the symptoms of multiple sclerosis, so that, that they worked very well. I'm going to try to find another picture of this here for you guys. Of um, Here is a, let's see if you can see this. We know people with psoriasis, right? Psoriasis is an autoimmune issue. And uh, this patient on the right, you know, you can see the severe plaques. Um, we can go on some of these really nasty drugs to treat uh, psoriasis, or we can give them some vitamin D. This patient was treated with 35,000 units. It's a lot of vitamin D. I would not do this on your own, by the way. 35,000 units of vitamin D daily for six months. And, and uh, that... Were they that, pretty deficient? They were not deficient, but they brought that level up. And they did this with 12 patients. So this is picture one. Here is another patient who has, uh, has vitiligo. So lacking in pigment of the skin. That's another, another one. And, and if you know anybody who has psoriasis or vitiligo, you know, the, these are, especially on the face, they don't want to go out in public, right? Um, they're depressed. Um, I always say, do you think this patient feels better about themselves? And that was a huge improvement, you know, and that's, a, that's again, an autoimmune response. So we are fixing the immune response, right? Bringing down the inflammation and helping these melanocytes work better. Now, I show physicians this all the time. They ask me, Jim, how can we fix you know, psoriasis? And they want to do all these things to give these nasty drugs to give them vitamin D. I have, I have shown over 100 physicians this this picture and nobody was taking the promise. You know? mm -hmm. And there's studies out there showing this. But, uh, you know, an easy way of doing that. You know, I, had, I showed a, a dermatologist this thing. You know, they, they would rather do in office treatments. Why is that? Money. Money. <laughs> right? I see that all the time. Well, I'd rather do this treatment. Well, why do you want to do that treatment you for? It's a terrible treatment. I can do, well, I'm going to get paid for doing it. I see the patient in my office once a week. You know, that's, you know, so. But they'd be seeing the patient anyway, I'm assuming, to attract them, right? Every six months. It's a reference on that. You know, if you just look up, uh, here's what I recommend. If you go home and Google, um, just high dose vitamin D, psoriasis, vitamin D3, and psoriasis. You're going to find that whole article there. 
you know, um, at some third. Of course, maybe there's people doing it, you just don't know about it, too. Not in the class of these. No? Yeah, they would have to have a pay at 35,000 units. That would be oh, something they would have to have a pay. Yeah, there's no such thing as 35,000 units. I don't know why they picked 35,000 units, but they did. And so that's, that's why we did it that way. Um, so we're treating depression. Uh, uh, suicide thoughts with, with vitamin D. Uh, there's all kinds of different things out there. Insulin resistance, pain, infertility, menopausal symptoms, MS, autism. Um, every autoimmune issue is going to be associated with the vitamin D deficiency. What would the, auto, the um, autism association? You know, they're, they're, they're looking at more of a serotonin levels on, on these kids and, and helping out with that and helping with socialization so they get the vitamin D level up. So that's where that's, that's coming from. So there's tons and tons of studies on, on vitamin D that way. Very, very safe. So, you know anybody who's used it for insulin resistance? Not necessarily directly for insulin resistance, but we know that it is associated with low. Maybe somebody with low uh, has insulin resistance or have a low amount of D level. So, um, uh, so that's important with that. Multivitamins are going to contain anywhere from 100 to 200 units of vitamin D. So we're not getting much in there. Sometimes you get your calcium with vitamin D, right? You're not getting very much. It's usually 100 units. So I don't. I say go ahead and take the vitamin D with your calcium, but you want to again supplement with that. So again, our recommendation is somewhere between. 5,000 to 10,000 units daily, or 50,000 units weekly. And then if you get sick, take 100,000 units for three to five days. With that cold coming on, you get the flu, you get a boost the immune system, that's a great way of, of getting, getting everything kind of treated. And remember that you put sunscreen on, you have you have blocked 99% of it. And the one thing I, I didn't tell you, if you're outside, you know, why do we have low vitamin D levels? Well, we are a community now that works under fluorescent lights. We're inside, right? We're all in, in we're all indoors. It's too hot, we're sweating, and then and then and then we if we sweat, first thing we do, you know, it's like, well I'm gonna go take a shower, I stink. Now you're rinsing all the vitamin D. The vitamin D is made in the skin. All right, so now you scrub that all off. So I just told you, you may want to wait for, for a few hours before you do that. Okay? I'm not telling you not to use soap. But that, you know, just realize it's a, it's a different way. That's why we have some problems. Our kids, you know, I mean, I have, I have you know, two boys, you know, 13 and 12. And I, get out, get outside, get outside. You know? We want them outside, we want them constantly on video games, we want them getting getting some sunlight, we want them moving, we want their bones to be good, so it's important to have that. You know, um, it's important for us to get outside and get that. So yeah, light therapy is another way of getting it, so you can get some light therapy that way too. How much vitamin D would you get from light therapy? I don't know hundred percent, but they they tell me you're getting around um, I believe 15,000 units with 15 minutes of the Caribbean sun at noon. So. Is that harmful to you? 15 minutes, no one's going to say it's real harmful. You know? Um, do you know that actually skin cancer is associated with low vitamin D levels? We have, there's actually, there's actually case studies where there's been um, a young girl who's been institutionalized. She's never been outside ever a day in her life. She's been inside, she, you know. And got skin cancer. And very, very low vitamin D levels. So skin cancers are associated with low vitamin D levels. So get outside and boost that immune system. And then put on the sunscreen. Obviously we don't want to sit there and bake and, and have issues. But, uh, Using some common sense is important. Uh, any questions on that? See so if there's anything else in my talk that I'm going to say kind of
just getting the overview of everything yeah. without all the flash. You mentioned uh, pets, like you do pets. So just, um, would you have to have a, I guess, a veterinarian? Like yeah, you know, um, it's kind of interesting. I, I talked to, you know, vets, you know, um, vets make their money off of dispensing their patients. And that's, that's, that's how they suffer with their income. And now the new laws are saying that you can go, you can ask for the, the prescription and go and get it filled up. IV, Walmart, those places now. But the problem is, is that pharmacists have been trained in these medications. They don't sometimes even know how to read them. It kind of scared me a little bit. Um, I tell my veterinarians, I don't. I am not here to compete against you or your business. Um, they call. They call me when they have a problem patient. You know, Jim had his problem patient. This this cat, you know, he's got hyperthyroidism and they won't swallow the methamphetamine pill. What can you do? Oh, let me make a chewy treat for you. Oh, let me make a a little jelly rubber to the ear. You know, um, today I had a dog that has a brachial. Um, Esophagus kind of, kind of collapsed a little bit, and the dog has a, a cough and and gets into spasms and things. And so you know they they called me and said, hey, can you make some hydrocodone? So well, I don't carry hydrocodone, but I can make this. And here's the dosage. Well, great, thank you. And you know then they count they count on it. And then the beauty of that, the owner doesn't have to go get the prescription each and every month. They can actually get a refill. So we're able to work with their with them. Well, I always tell them, we're, we're not here to compete, we're here to, to, to help them with their patients and we recommend our, our patients going to their veterinarian because we want them to stay in business. We want them to know what happened, what happened on pharmacies. I don't know if I answered that question. Yeah. So any doctor can give a prescription and come to you? Yep. Yep. They have to know what they're writing for. Okay. A lot of times they call me and they'll say, you know, you know, how do I write this? Can we help them with that? Um, or a verbal, you know, how to help? I have been taking supplements and uh, 3,000 uh, vitamin D3s mm -hmm. daily. Okay. And have been to a doctor in 12 years. Okay. And so now I'm on Medicare and uh, Got to pick a doctor. Sure. And so, uh, any doctor that would ever prescribe something for me, uh, you could uh, handle. There might a lot of things they might prescribe for you might be something that you would need for me. Mm -hmm. But there might be something that you know that there might be an issue mm -hmm. uh, for you. Um, you know, one of the hottest things we're doing right now is for pain. You know, the biggest thing right now with physicians. You know, we've been lied to by the pharmaceutical industry that we can't make, if someone's in pain, you can't make them an addict. Well, that was just was the most ridiculous thing they ever told anybody. And certainly they can make you an addict, and good people who were, weren't searching for this became addicted to these pain medications because we've been told that you have to take it because, you know, you need it, you're in pain. And, and then, you know, there are certain people who are just, you know, you take it and, oh my goodness gracious, I found, I found God, you know, in this pill, and and, and they and that's not what they were intended. Um, and so we make topical medications to treat the neuropathic pain, the bone pain, the things, and we apply it to where the place it hurts. It's not like being gay. It's not like you know you eat the oil. It's actually taking medications that we normally take orally, but maybe not without the narcotic that we don't mess up the brain, so they can go back to work. We can we can relax the muscles and things. So why should I snow you if you only have a tight neck? I can relax that neck for you. You know? Um, and what's happened, unfortunately, because the next question people have is, what is it covered by insurance? For 20 years, never was covered by insurance. We saw about a two-year window where everything was being covered. They closed it up again. And they'll, they'll open it back up. But it's, um, um, you know, to keep the prices down, it's always good to pay, you know, cash. It's now we don't have insurance. It's, you're, 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 you're constantly on the phone. You're constantly, you know, trying to argue with it. They, they take money back. You always pay a higher price if you're on insurance. And cash is always the best way. Our average price in our pharmacy is $58. That's the average, the average price. Um, 
It sounds for, like a lot for, for anything. But for what amount? It just our average prescription price is fifty eight dollars. Okay. Okay. It's not a bad price. No. Some other drugs that I've been on. Uh, you look at the <laughs> average price now of prescription drugs, mm -hmm. generic, brand name doesn't matter. The average price now out of pocket, I mean, what it is, is three hundred dollars. Now it used to be it used to be ninety dollars, you know, five years ago. It's gone up, you know, three hundred percent in the last few years. It's only going to higher. You see what's kind of going on with the generic drug companies. Things that used to cost ten dollars now three or four hundred dollars. It it is absolutely crazy. So actually one of our, our plans is that I can't copy anything out there, but I can sure make something really kind of close and I certainly can add something else to it to make it better. And you know what? And then we can help people save money. We've been, you know, so we've been actually looking at things we can help save money for. Mm -hmm. All your topical steroids for people who have eczema, uh, like we joints use these things for different health conditions. And so, or topical estrogens that women need for vaginal dryness. Those things now are all three, four hundred dollars, and Medicare doesn't pay for them. So we're we're actually making a living, and people are very excited because we can make something that's a little more affordable. But it's out of pocket. And for the pain, what would you ask your doctor for? If it's like a chronic pain issue. I, you know, I, would, I, mean, I, I have prescription pads, I have different things, but you know what you do is that, hey, I saw this pharmacist down at the district drugs. I have this card here. He says there's some things he can do from the top of the pain. I understand it might be out of pocket. It's going to cost me about $60. You know, would you be willing to call him? Okay, so just Probably. And then I say, what kind of pain does she have? You know, what have you treated for? You know, um, what's you know, what do you think it is? And we'll, we can come up with a combination of different things. And typically, I'm using two or three different items. I'm using a non-steroidal things that would normally upset your stomach if you take orally or drug interactions. Now I'm doing topically. I don't have that. I, you know, you might need a muscle relaxant because it's you know. Well, okay, now we don't want to have drug interactions or make it hard. If you fall, we want to be able to drive. So I put a non in there. And you may have some nerve issues, so I might use a nerve medication. Okay? So, so there's some great things out there that we're doing. Um, out there. Um, you know, one of the, the hottest things right now in the pharmacy beyond that is um, for people with um, autoimmune issues and fibromyalgia and any other immune issues is something called low-dose naltrexone. Naltrexone is a drug that was normally used for drug addicts to treat narcotic abuse. They found that by giving them these little tiny dosages, we stimulate, don't stimulate the immune system, but you normalize the immune system. You know, and so it would work well with something like vitamin D, and all of a sudden, you know, we're helping people with Crohn's disease, we're clearing up Crohn's, we're helping with multiple sclerosis, we're helping with cancers. I had a guy who call in, um, that's something for somebody who has skin cancers. Um, so we're using it for a lot of different things. You know, there's 130 some different autoimmune issues out there. And this little wonder drug, a little tiny dose, you know, really does very well for a lot of people. My fibromyalgia patients respond instantly. What is their usual dose on that? Usual dose, is we start out usually, um, I see them usually start a, a, a half a milligram, work up to four and a half. I usually start at a milligram and a half, take it at bedtime. The body repairs itself at night, so we take it at nighttime. And then they dose up to four and a half. The worst side effect you might get is sleeplessness for about a couple of weeks, it goes away. Um, and you can't be on any, any narcotics. You know, and I always ask my physicians, you know, why, you know, would you be willing to, to try this, you know, get, get them off the tram at all, let's, let's try this. And I had one physician who I helped hire years ago out in Geneseo. Oh, I don't know, Jim, it sounds kind of dangerous. I said, well, why is it dangerous? 50 milligrams is safe. I want to give her a milligram and a half. All of a sudden, she's sending me patients left and right now because she saw how well this worked with her fibromyalgia patients. You know, and it works nice. How would, like, we, you know, kind of explain to doctors, like, just as a group and even... You know, one of the, I, one of the things is is that there's, there's a great book, um, I, and I cannot 
think the name of it right now. There was one book I used to use called The Promise of Low Dose Naltrexone. There's a, the LDN book, and I can't remember exactly what, how it's called. I don't have it in my book bag. But the chapter one is explains to them how it works. The rest of the chapters are explaining how you use it in, in, in your thyroid, how she knows patients, how you're using it in your, your uh, hyperthyroid patients, how you're using it in, in, in um, cancer patients. And so even chapters treating a different disease. So all I have to do is read the first chapter and go, their eyes are open. Even with thyroid too. Well, I mean, just because that you knock on it, as yeah. you know. And yeah. so the one, I mean, the first thing that I really noticed was getting rid of my virus, mm -hmm. hepatitis A. And so, I mean, it was quick because we were struggling with it. Dr. Staub and Gouda and Mwani trying to get just my levels were like this as far as sure. my liver counts, my AST and ALT. Now they're 20 and 22, and that's awesome. So they were, you know, way up there. Yeah, yeah. Way up there. And so that was the first thing I noticed. And then, um, I guess my weight. Um, I've always had trouble with my thyroid. It's turning on, you know, hyper. And sure. going under 100 pounds. Um, sure. Is you know, your house goes? Um, actually, well, I'm not sure. I was never technically diagnosed, but. I bet you are. This goes on and on. Yeah. High and low, high and low, high and low. That's what they said. Yeah. Last time I was in Mayo in 09, they were so concerned about other things. The two docs there, I had a team of four docs there, and two of them said, sure, but we're not going to worry about it. Just, you know, I have lupus, so it doesn't really matter. I'll go 10, yeah. Yeah. And so, but that's all I've always struggled with. I'm really sure. I keep it. And so, that's one thing I've noticed this whole entire time I've been on it. I'm actually weighing more than usual, which I mean it's safe. It's a safer thing. Actually, I see people even lose weight on it. Yeah, I mean, depending on what everything's, you eat. Everything's normalized quickly. It, right. sounds, it sounds kind of crazy. It sounds, if someone came to me and said, here's a medication you can take that will do this, this, and this, and this, I'd be like, uh, it sounds too good to be true, walk out the door, you know? And, it's one of those medications that it's it, it's it's the real deal, and it, it does work. I believe the drug companies will come out with a better form of it that is that is patentable, and and when they do, it will be you know somewhere between five hundred to a thousand dollars. So, forty five dollar a month drug. Yeah, but what's wrong with the way it is? I guess. Drug company. Once the drug company makes it, it's better. It's always better. Mm. I always laugh because uh, pharmacies have done so many things with bringing things to the market for drug companies, and they just look at what we do, and then and then they, they get on board. And then they, they well, I'd like to. I mean, I was trying to explain it to Dr. Staub, and, and you know, there wasn't enough. And I and thought maybe you could vouch for this, like if there's not enough studies on it. I'm showing them different studies, but maybe they're not the double blind studies or whatever to show. You have that, to have those, those, um, those you know. Um, Evidence based, and you have to have you know, you know, a couple thousand people on it. You'll never see those things out there. There are studies out there. I mean, I always tell physicians, like for instance, for fibromyalgia, low dose naltrexone. I said, okay, you know, doc, there's a there's a little study from a little little you know medical school you probably never heard of it's called Stanford. I think it's out in California, <laughs> and you know, you may want to check into it. Yeah. You know, or University of Pennsylvania has done tons of studies. You know, that center has done tons of studies on it. You may want to check it out. But so what is it, University of Pennsylvania and Yeah, Stanford. Fibromyalgia. Stanford's been the big one that's that's caught the eyes of um, a lot of your rheumatologists. I'd love that I mean just there's so many other patients that I think do well that are not seeing someone that would die or that would treat with this. So if I can get yeah. my doctor kind of look into it maybe a little more. Somebody say it's a there's a placebo effect and I might say Single effect of everything, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, so I know exactly what works. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, levels, blood levels are pretty yeah. substantial yeah. evidence. Yeah. I think. Is it the LDN book? Is that the one that you're recommending? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because when I first went on it, I was on it maybe a month, and I was in Dr. Shot's office. He says, Well, what do you think? So I really don't think it's working. Mm -hmm. I don't feel any difference. Then about six weeks, I was on it is when it, one morning it occurred to me that I'm like, gee, I don't have any joint pain when I wake up this morning. And wait, yesterday it was the same thing. I didn't have any. So it started working. Mm -hmm. And then um, he was checking my thyroid levels. 
and he had they had de decreasing my thyroid medication, and then so he kept, he kept my LDN the same, and then about two months ago is when I had that rash, and I've had it for two months, and so it, now my my joint pains come back. And I've been like the last few weeks. I've been taking um, like three ibuprofen a day. Like what's going on? Then last week he increased it to 4.5, and I only had to take the uh, ibuprofen twice last okay. week, and I could already see the rashes start. It's oh, it's know. starting to go away. So I think you should have run up to four and a half long ago. But did he kept cautious. He was very cautious with the, your, with your patient mm -hmm. Hashimoto's because you wind up, um, yeah. um, you know, just uh, having some issues. Um, having issues of uh, they don't want you coming hyperthyroid, you know. So it's a it's a fine balance. And the book's kind of scary, you know, a little bit. You know, I didn't have um, tons of uh, experience with uh, Hashimoto's. I had tons of experience with fibro and multiple sclerosis mm -hmm. and some Crohn's, but not but not. And he now we do. I'm sorry. When he put, uh, put me on it, he says I'm putting it on. I'm putting you on it for your gut. So you'll be my first patient that I'm putting as well, uh, for my for my gut. But not, I mean, it's uh, it's it's helps that you know because I haven't been haven't haven't had to go go to ER in the last five months for that. But it seemed to be helping working on my thyroid first, I guess. But yep. I mean, when we look at the blood test, these things are always always got to do. We can't we can't be you know swimming upstream when you're not taking care of the gut and doing those things. And it always starts with the gut. You know, when you start fixing the gut, but uh, it, it's it's hard that way. And we have patients who have RSD. If it's a uh, it's a very painful syndrome. Um, it's been your neuropathic pain and it's uncontrollable. And physicians have a hard time, but they're using it for that, using it for bringing down complete inflammation. It's just look migraines. It's um, you know, it it is one of those things that you just think, oh my gosh. I I get more excited about it. I've had a, a, a pharmacist friend down in Texas who has got some neuropathy <coughs> and um, uh, he made a one percent gel. He rubbed it on, rubbed it on his foot, and it's been burning. And he said, he said within fifteen minutes that burning went away. Right. And then, you know, he's like, he like took care of it. That, yeah, yeah. That's they're using it topically, you know, um, okay. uh, for different things. They're using it on animals for some some skin reactions. You know, for, and it makes sense. You know, we got all these 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 dogs who have. Who have you know the itchiness and things that go on? You know these immunosuppressants. Put a little bit of cream on there and takes care of it. What about for dogs? Then I mean, just to give it to them as a pill or yeah. It could. I don't. I've never done it, but it could. It's like if I have an older dog, and yeah. I think he has a lot of neurological problems, and he's had, I think he's had seizures probably. It's safe. It's been given. It's been given to dogs. There's tons of literature out there. How would I feel to get it from a dog? Yeah, I've had that prescribed. Just call the viewers. Yeah. Dr. Walsh, I'm sure, will be the chiropractor. Yeah. Are there many doctors and physicians in the area that, that um, do look into this, that will do some controls? I got four. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to try to do it. What's that? I'm going to try to do it. For your dog? Well, for my dog, and then yeah. maybe for. Oh, I see. I remember. I remember years ago. I had a doc. I mean, I told. I, I told a physician. I said, "Do you want to be busy?" He said. He said, "Yeah." I said, yeah, "I'm trying to get patients." I said, "Here you go. Read this." I said, "You'll have patients knocking down your door." I said, "And I'm not. You know." I said, "And you're going to help them." You know. And and so we have. So now there there are physicians who are getting their door knocked down. Yeah, you know, and I just, you know, it's, it's not making me rich. It's, you know, it's it's a it's a very it's a very cheap drug, and it's something that we can we can help people. And that's the one the part of it is. It's, it's fun helping people. So, it's exciting. So that's well, that's one of the exciting things that we do. Yeah. So can you can you just explain?
explain just for anybody that doesn't know like how what it does with the endorphins and just kind of like a synopsis of it's uh um there are something called opioid-like receptors and basically healing cancer. It's not healing anything. It's not curing it. It's, it's allowing you to live with it and normalizing it so it's not progressing or getting a better. But it's not going to, but you know, they, they kind of talk about with cancer patients, for instance, that, you know, either you have cancer or you don't have cancer. And now they're going to say, now we can, we can keep it at bay and live with it. And that's what that's kind of what kind of Yeah. Kind yeah. Of. And that's what kind of what this is. That way, so it's um, it's bringing down a lot of these these uh, inflammatory uh, uh, processes. I think they did a very good job that way. But, yeah. 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 Opioid-like receptors. And that's that was a, a new concept that I never heard of before until I started reading, reading into this. And this the way I've heard of endorphins. That's the word yeah, who doesn't want endorphins? <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, I thank you for uh, for asking me to come to come by and talk. I love the I love I actually love the talk. You know, and I love the talk. I mean, I'm not I don't have fancy different things, but I always can talk about different things that are going on. So we talked about several different things tonight. Yeah, that's good. That's good. How do you do? Please, please do. Yeah. Summertime, right? Yeah. I talk about thyroid. I talk, you know, there's, there's things, you know, it's, it's, but we can all. Thyroid would be really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, talk about there's an adrenal fatigue talk. Yeah. Fatigue. So would you recommend, Hormone. you know, as far as adrenal fatigue and B vitamins, you should like mm -hmm. have like B vitamins and stuff. So would you recommend that on a daily basis? So That's going to be a part of your. I think honestly, you get a good multivitamin that you're taking a couple times a day. And physicians always just say to me, they get kind of, I mean, I, I was trained the same way. They were in the same classes with them. We all learned that you don't do that. And they all say that, well, Jim, it's great. You're just taking, you're just making an expensive urine. If you want to take it, <laughs> you're just making an expensive urine. And I said, well, why do you say that? Well, you, you pee it all out. I said, well, OK. Right. So I shouldn't take it because I pee it out, right? Yeah, you shouldn't take it. It's not, it's not doing any good. Well, I guess I'm going to stop drinking water. Why would you do that for? Well, it's like pee out 99.99%. <laughs> so it must not be doing me any good. That's yeah, good. so That's there's, good. you know, so I hate those kind of responses. Mm -hmm. You know, you are getting nutrition. The problem with vitamins is that just because you take a mineral, you just need to go to absorb mineral. What kind of vitamin are we putting in there? And, you know, this B12, for instance. Um, B12 is what we're giving to those people with cyanocobalamin. The bomb injury is B12. They cleave it, they, they, they marry it with cyanide. So your body's got to cleave that cyanide group and methylate it. Some people do a very good job, most of us don't. And so we don't get much benefit from it. So, what are, kind of vitamins are you taking? Your B6, there's an there's a active form of B6 and inactive. Some people activate it very nicely, some people don't. So a good vitamin company is going to be looking at what's putting what's putting in there. Just because I put a calcium in there or magnesium doesn't mean you're absorbing it. So we look at chelated versions of that. So that's important. So the one I the brand I like is um, one called Alpha Base, and, I, and you will feel better with it. And it's you know I usually recommend you know anywhere from two capsules a day. You can actually take up to eight. I recommend one in the morning, one about two o'clock in the afternoon. I always tell people that if your urine goes clear. How do you sell those in here? Yeah. So. Are they 
They're not going to be a food, like a green, you know, type of thing, but they are, um, all, all the minerals are chelated, so I say it's, the body recognizes that as food. Okay. So the minerals are recognized, you know. Number one calcium in the world is calcium carbonate. Mm -hmm. That's what everyone sells. Everyone sells calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is Tums. If you've seen the commercial, Tums is a good source of calcium. Well, they're not lying to you because it's calcium carbonate, you know. Now, but you need you need acid in your belly to absorb calcium. So we're giving you an antacid to tell you you're absorbing calcium. You're not absorbing calcium. You're dumping it. It constipates you. And then we tell you that you know what? You should take magnesium calcium. Again. That's really better. So they give you calcium carbonate and they give you magnesium chloride or magnesium citrate, which magnesium citrate and magnesium chloride causes diarrhea. So now they give you two cheap minerals, put them together for you. One causes constipation, one causes <laughs> loose stools. Now we kind of fix that problem so now everyone thinks we're getting it. You know, it's 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 all in marketing. And you know, I so, you know, you get what you pay for. You, you dump, now you dump that and you but there are better versions of magnesium, better versions of calcium, better versions of, the, of these different minerals out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, so